Afternoon, followers of the channel. Now, I'm always one for trying things out and trying it in my own house. Now, I'm actually in my own, I'm actually in my own house. We've had a little bit of work done where we've had an opening that was our lounge behind you and through there was a through lounge. There was an RSJ support going across the middle of the room. So in effect, two rooms split into one. We've had it boarded up and we've had proper stud work, insulation in between, plasterboard. And we've had two sliding doors fitted on a barn runner. If you don't know what a barn runner is, I'll show you later on in the video. But we've separated it and we've got bare plasterboard that I've told the joiner that just bought it out for me because I'm going to use some special product that I will skim out like a plasterer. I'm far from a plasterer. But you've seen the thumbnail. I'll lift the tub up. It's the, oh, sun's out. It's the Prestonet and it's the interior multi-light filler. Now, you can't see with the sun. This stuff applies by a specialist roller and you smooth it out with some specialist tools. I've got all the tools. Now you're gonna say, Phil, is this a sponsored video? No, it's not. I went to a trade day at the local Brewers in Nottingham recently where this was being demoed. I needed to see it being done. I saw the rep, which is Brian. Thank you very much, Brian, for talking me through it. Brewers have got a deal on this. This tub stuff retails at about 30 pounds a tub. The tools that you need, and I'll Get the sun on me. Oh wow, look at the sun. Move out of the way. You need the specialist roller, and I can't even pronounce it. It's this to me is like what you'd use for um, you know the high build stuff where you put it on and leave a bark effect. It's like a coarse, can you see that? Probably not. Oh, let's get it out of the wrapper. It's like a coarse foam roller. Quite quite textured and you apply the material by this. Can you see how coarse it is? You apply, the, you apply the material quite liberally and you smooth it out with a specialist smoothing tool. I'm back out of the sun. I hey, guarantee the sun comes out when you don't want it. And these are the smoothing tools. They're a stainless steel blade, very sharp. And um, can you help me pronounce this? Beastia, can you see it? Can you, yeah. There you go. Bestia, but there's no T in it, by, by, whatever. If I could read, I'd have been a teacher. I mean, a proper teacher, not a lecturer, painting and decorating. But you use one of these to smooth over your walls. It's just quite as simple as that. This stuff is a product that you can multi-layer. So once you've got one layer on, you can let it dry, and the drying time's around about three or four hours, you might find in conditions a bit warmer, it dries a bit quicker, but three or four hours, you can go over it again and re-smooth the surface. Now, I will show you how to do that, but this is just a bit of an intro into what I'm going to be doing because preparation is the key. Now, I've got some joints in the plasterboard that need addressing first, and I'm gonna put some scrim tape on it. Something else I picked up at Brewers while I was there and recommended to use was the plaster of scrim tape. This roll, which has got, well, it's got 90 meters on it. There's ample on that. These are about a tenner. You might get it a little bit cheaper, but it's plaster of scrim tape. It's like a mesh. I'm gonna put it over these joints and I'm going to be smoothing out the filler over it, ready for me to actually do the application of the, the filler stroke plaster the roll-on filler, let's call it roll-on filler, tomorrow. But I just wanna show you how I'm gonna do this because, again, go with recommendations and speak to the rep on how you do it. I don't need to be filling the gaps, the joints first. I'm not going to be putting this straight onto the bare plaster because even though it's got a little bit of a sticky tacky to it, I want to know that there's security there of it actually staying on the surface. So what I will be doing is applying the filler to that area and then putting this onto it first before I do anything else. And I've got a little specialist roller, which, it's in my hand, it's one there. So this will apply the tape adhesive, i.e. the filler. Then I go over it with that, and then to get it nice, 
I smooth it with that. Now these come in various different sizes. Cost of these are around about 30, 40 pounds, depending on the size you go for. Bigger ones are about 50 or 60. I've got that one, which is um, a 14 inch blade. Can you see that? 14 inch blade. And I've also, not that I'm gonna be doing lots of this because it's not a big area. I've also got the wider one, which is a 18 inch blade. You can get them quite small to go around fittings like light fittings and things like that. But they are geared up for this job. They are a stiff blade to help smooth it. You don't need something soft. You don't need something that's flexible. You just need something stiff to get the smoothness onto that. We're calling it plaster filler, roll on plaster filler. Once it's dry, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once it's dry, you can sand it with your Merca or sand it down by hand to improve on that surface and get it smoother. Now, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be getting it on probably a couple of coats and then going over with the Merca. And that's how I'm gonna get a nice smooth finish ready for painting. And then you can just treat it like an ordinary wall. But all in all, this is gonna save me a little bit of money, isn't it? Because a tub of this is about 30 quid. My tools, 30, 40, 50, 60 quid. My rollers, I think my rollers, these are about 20-ish pounds. So I've had to spend the initial outlay, but I'm not having to pay a plasterer who's on big money to come and plaster me a wall out. And hopefully it'll look all right. So let me get my kit out, let's get started, and let's just show you a little bit of taping up. Right, I've opened the tub up, and as you can see, it's quite a, a thick filler consistency. Now you don't need to thin it down, you don't need to be um, mixing it. All you're going to do is load one of these rollers up. Now, put plenty on it, bed it all in, and then that will go onto your plasterboard where the joint tapes will be. And then you can put the joint tape straight over it. And that's what I'm going to do. So let me move you around. I'm loading it up nicely and we'll get in a position we can see what I'm doing. Now you can see me here, I'm not going to bore you with taping up everything, I just want to show you how you do it. Now I've got a joint there, I've got a joint across the top that goes onto the existing wall area there. So the plan is, I'm going to be putting tape on there, tape on there, and also where the angle is in the corner. I was recommended to actually put this into the corner, bend it round and then float it out, so that's what I'll do. But for today's intro, before we crack on with the actual smoothing of this with the full product, I'm just going to show you how I tape this up and then I will cut out and blend out and I will see you tomorrow. Because I have other side, I, have, I do have the other side to do. I've got to take the doors off and as I say, I don't want to bore you with that. So, I've got plenty on the roller and literally, I am just putting it over the area. I'm doing it slowly so you can see it. I'm putting it over the area just to put enough on as like a backing adhesive for the scrim tape, which on a big roll like this, all I'm gonna do is stick it over there. Can you see? Pressing it down. I've just got an ordinary filling knife just to cut it off. Once that's on, I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to get my, I don't know how to pronounce that. Can you tell me how you pronounce it? I'm just going to press it in and just literally level over that filler. And it, literally, it is as easy as that. And there you go. So let me crack on. I'm going to do the rest of it, and then I'll show you what it's like, and then we'll cut into tomorrow's video. So to come back to you tomorrow, where it's the same day, I just wanted to tell you how that first initial feel, I'll say the word feel, of this product was. Now, you saw me take that joint there, put some of the adhesive filler, the plaster, 
with the roller over the surface, put the tape on, smoothed it out, and then actually I just went over with the roller again to put a little bit more product actually over the surface. And it did help, and I did that all the way around. Now, one thing I probably should have said at the beginning, these rollers, they're like an ordinary roller, wash them out. I'm gonna to say to you, wash them out the day before because even though they're new and they're a plastic, I've only had about half a dozen little fragments of that breaking off on me, which I'll be honest, hand on heart, I was told by the rep that you best just wash them out before you start using them, let them dry. So what I'm gonna to do tonight, I'm gonna to wash that out ready for using it tomorrow when I do the full complete wall. Now, I still have the other side to do, which I'm not gonna bore you with that, I've told you that, but I'll just tell you what I've done here. I've got across that top joint, I've done these side joints, I've even done the angle joint there, and just bent it in, pushed it in, and I've got an ordinary filling knife as well for the smaller areas, because I've, I've not got one of the smaller filling blades. I've done it on both sides, look, can see it there. I've floated out the corner edge there, which is joining up, and then the corner there, I've done exactly the same. I've just bent on a 90 degree, it was flat, and I've gone bent onto a 90, yeah, into the corner. I've just overlapped it slightly. The adhesive was on, it oozed through. I filled it and just skimmed it out on both sides and added a little bit more adhesive product where I needed it just by hand, not off the roller, just off a ordinary filling knife and just put it in where I needed it. And then floated out with this. And I have to say, these are really nice for floating out. They give a smooth finish. It doesn't matter if it's not too smooth because we can sand it when we come to the final coat when it's dry at the end. So that said, you're holding me up listening to me. I'm gonna go round, do the other side. I've got a few little nogs, whatever you wanna call them, where the, um, the barn door brackets are. I've gotta take those off and fill around those, but all in all, that's gone on well. I can see it drying and I've only been about half an hour. That tomorrow will be lovely to go over. I won't need to put any sandpaper over it because I've got it quite smooth. I will build it up with a couple of layers and then at the end, sand everything. Now, anybody who's asking, you don't need to put a primer sealer onto these walls. And so long as you go over a wall that's sound, clean, dry, you shouldn't have any um, need to put actually a primer sealer on. But if in doubt, you can always contact the rep or the technical helpline. But for this plasterboard dry lining straight on, straight out the tub. Right everybody, it's next day and you saw what I did yesterday. I've taped the joints and it's dried overnight, lovely. I would actually say within a couple of hours, these had gone off enough that if you were doing it all on the same day, you could have actually gone over them. But I made it quite simple for myself. I used the applicator of the, the smaller roller, put the adhesive, we're calling it plaster, roller plaster, on for a, just a base, stuck the mesh scrim tape over the top, and then I applied a little bit more, just so, applied some of the plaster, sorry, not, not scrim tape. Um, I applied a little bit more of the adhesive plaster over the top and then floated them out with the tools. So that's all done and I'm going to go, I'm gonna say health leather, I'm not gonna do health leather. I'm now gonna start getting the main areas of this wall area skimmed out. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is using the wider roller. And I said to you, probably the last thing that you saw me talking about was don't do the schoolboy error like I did with this one. When you open them out of the packet, please wash them out because you do get little bits of coarse, wiry hair coming off them. So I did this yesterday, last night, when I was washing out that. I've washed that out as well. You're gonna say about washing out, no problem washing out, just get some warm water, it doesn't have to be hot, and the adhesive plaster starts dissolving and just going to a, a milky solution. That's all I'm gonna say, it's milky solution. Just run plenty of water through your um, sink so you're not clogging up any of your U-bends, but it does wash out fine. If you wanted to get a bucket of water outside and rinse it off first, you could do, but they do wash out fine with warm water. So these are all been washed. There's no little bits coming off, or if they do, minimal, and they're all dry. So what I'm gonna do, move the camera around, and let's have a look at how we're gonna get this application uh, of the plaster on the wall. Right, I've moved around. Now, yesterday, I had no idea how to pronounce that, and my wife says it's pronounced 
Bessia, Bessia. Now, if you Google Bessia, which is your parent company of um, Prestonet, it gives you a little bit of a history that they're a French company and they started with gelatine. Yeah. The history, if you can just see it there, if you Google Bessia, the French company, uh, and they acquired Prestonet in the 19, what was it, 1989, and then they've gone into this plaster and yeah. Please have a look, Bessia. I'll put a link to the Bessia website in the description below. And while you're in the description below, you'll see that there's a link to um, buy me a coffee, if you so wish, or even um, press that super thanks and send me a, a gift. It's much appreciated, much appreciated. So let's crack on. Right, I've got the adhesive out, the roller plaster, and what I'm gonna be doing is loading this up, put plenty on, applying it to probably couple of foot at a time, just work with an area that you can actually work with comfortably. And then what I'll be doing is getting my Bessier, Bessier, it's French, Bessier, ooh, wee oui, wee, oui. Bessier smoother, and I will be smoothing out a section at a time. Now, don't worry if it goes off on you too quick, it won't do, because the open time is well easier now before it's starting to go off. But if you are joining up to a section that you've already done and you think, oh, it looks a little bit rough, don't worry because when it's dry, what you'll do is actually sand it out and sand it smooth. And also, like I'm probably planning on doing is giving it a second skim tomorrow or later today, depends if I've got time. Might have jobs to do with the wife and the kids. But, because I've told you I'm working at home, it's a busman's holiday. So I'm gonna start with this section there. I will just point out that I did run some of the scrim tape into the angle, overlapping into the corner. I'm not going to worry too much about the return angle at this moment in time. That is something that I will float out after I've done this main wall because that scrim tape is actually quite thin. It's not too thick. And I will just literally float it out with this product. Even if I just use my own filling knife just to get into the angles that I can't get into with that and float it out, get it smooth and then just give it a light sand down and just blend it, just do a bit of a blend. It's actually a really easy product to manipulate. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna just get some on. It's just as simple as this, just really dunk it in and make sure that your roller is picking up enough material. And we're working out the tub and that's all it is. Just get plenty on, roll it round and once you've bedded it in, you'll probably say it's quite easy to actually load up for the second time. So I'm gonna go with that for now and let's get it on the wall. I will be using the wider Bessier, Bessier smoothing blade. And this is the 18 inch. I have got the 14 inch, but we'll try the 18 inch and also the 14 inch if I require it in um, the smaller sections. So let's move you up and let's get cracking. Right, there we go, we loaded up. I'm coming up to the top. I'm just gonna get it on as evenly as I possibly can. I've got the tub here. I'll just load up as I go. Now I'm not gonna go right into the corner. I'll go as close as I possibly can because what I will do, I'll feed. I will push and manipulate a little bit more of the material into the corner as I require. So let's try and get a decent area coated up, put plenty on. I'm going over the scrim tape that I did before. You see, the more I get on the roller, the more it actually takes it. Don't be frightened to put plenty on. I'll probably need a little bit more than that. You can actually build up to about eight mil thickness. I'll probably not be going as far as that. But I want plenty on, and I'm quite happy with that. Let's see if I can zoom you in. Right, <clears throat> keep these clean, have something to wipe these edges off if you get it building up. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up, and I'm gonna, it's a nice grip on this. I'm gonna just gently smooth over. Now if you see that you've got little air bubbles pop in there, 
it might be a case that you have to just put a little bit more pressure. So I'm just going to start going left to right for now before I start working into the tops. There is some on there which I'm going to put up against the bottom of the coving edge and then start floating down. I can start seeing where there's still some little, let's call them hairs, are coming off the roller. So as you see those, just flick them off, drop them onto the floor, move them onto the side. There's probably eight on there at the moment. Once you've bedded that roller in, that won't be happening. Keep that blade quite flat onto the surface, not on an angle like that. Keep it flat. That actually smooths it out really well. Coming up to the top, drawing down. I'm applying a little bit more up to the top with what's on the blade and that top edge there, let's just... That top edge there is now going very sharp against that bottom coving edge. Now I'm going to do exactly the same into the corner. All I'm doing is filling the corner up with what is on the blade at the moment. I'm still seeing some of the little black hairs off. <clears throat> some little black hairs off the roller. Now I've just got my little filling knife to get into this corner. I've got a wire for my speakers that I just can't seem to get enough adhesive into that corner. So. I am manually applying a little bit more adhesive with my own scraper. Now, next time round, I will probably buy some more of these that are smaller sizes because you can get them. But for the time being, the 14 and the 18 inch was, was fine. And that's, to be honest, that's all brewers had at the time. So I've just now got it into that corner, bringing it down. I'm seeing some of these hairs. I'm just gonna flip them off now Move them on to the other wall, just get them out of the way. I have to say where the scrim tape is into the corner, it is actually really smooth. I'm quite happy with that. Where I've got areas that have just pulled off, I've still got adhesive on there, which I'll just float those out and see another one. I'm putting them onto the wall that's gonna be sanded and painted anyway, so it doesn't matter. Start with the bottom and work your way up. Go on a horizontal and then from the top, bring it down. And do you know what? To say this is my first time of applying this, other than trialing it actually in brewers, I have to say that is quite smooth. Quite smooth. You could play about with it all day long and do this. Once you've got too much adhesive on there, just scrape it off like that. I can see a little corner up at the top. I could do with a little bit more filler up there and a bit there. All the way across there is fine. I'm just gonna dob that to come back. I'm just gonna float these out. I'm trying. I don't know whether I can take that little tab off yet. I've took that off. I can get in a bit closer now. Pressing hard, going all the way down. And that's my finished run. I'm not gonna play about with that anymore. I'm gonna go on to the section 
just there. So let me move everything and let's do another section. Right, we're back, I'm doing again. And I'm actually coming up to, let's, wait you'll see this. I'm actually coming up to the bead edging. And I'm gonna go on to that and round it. Put plenty on. Got to be careful, I'm going around with speaker cables. Now the roll is actually bedding in, it is applying it a bit more evenly. Not sure whether any more of those little wiry hairs are going to come out or not. Try and get close to the coving. I'll just go beyond. Just be beyond the bulkhead there onto the trim. I'm quite happy with that. I could probably put a little bit more on, but seeing as I will be doing another coat later today or tomorrow. I don't want it too thick for now. Right, again, we're gonna go left to right, blending into this. Still some wiry hairs, let's get rid of them now. Pushing whatever the excess is into the top angle. A couple more hairs I'll get rid of. I know I've not got enough on because I'm seeing this the bead edge on here showing through. So when I come from a second coat later, we'll probably get that sorted. Just helping it across the top. And as I say, don't worry if you get a little bit of rimples in it because you will be sanding it at the end. And I'm just bringing it all the way in, blending it. And I have to say, I'm quite impressed with that. So not bad. Let me crack on, get this wall finished, and I'll have a quick discussion with you once I've done all this. There we have it, I've done. I've probably been about an hour and a half to do both sides. Now this is the second side and you probably spot I've got pencils in some holes which is actually four. If you can see there, the barn doors that hang on this side that slide all the way back. So just some pencils to just keep. So I just know where the holes are for the um, bolts. But I've skimmed all these out. Now this is the first layer. 
if you look up close, it looks a little bit rim plane uneven. It's smooth, but just rim plane uneven. I'm not worried about that because when I go with a second coat over that, because I'm building up, you do about one or two mil at a time, I'm building up. So the second coat going on there, I will be able to blend those out and get a bit thicker um, coating onto it. Now, the main reason I want that second coat is I've got the angle beads just there and clearly the angle bead does step away from the plasterboard. I'm expecting a lot for me for the first time of using this to try and build up a lot in one go. I don't know what the product's like and I, it's a bit like painting, always put two thinner coats on than one thick one. Well, this is the same sort of principle, better to put two nice coats on than trying to bang it all on in one go. If you get a bit more experience, you'd probably say you can actually do that. But one coat on now, it is going off, but as I say, three to four hours, you can work back over it. Now, I'm on a weekend, I'm at home, I've got to go out, I've got to go up to the golf club, got to do me bits and pieces. So I will probably come back to this tomorrow, re-look at it, and then give it the second skim, if you want to call it. Now, so far, you can see what I've done across there, down, all the way down to the bottom. Two sides exactly the same, has used one tub. One tub of the Prestonet Multi-Light Filler. Now, I've got a second tub. This retails around about 30 pounds a tub. I know I've got my time on it, it's been a couple of hours, so let's call it six hours in total by the time I put a couple of coats on plus my tubs. If you're a bit practical and you're a bit handy, it's better than getting a plaster in at 150 quid making a load of mess. Because I will say there's not much mess from this. There's no clouds of dust or anything like that. The main, the main mess is getting it on your fingers and just dropping it on the floor. Now I've got the plastic hippo carpet protector down. So anything that is dropping off the actual roller or off the, um, well, the fancy blades, I can't, it begins with B, the fancy smoothing blades. If anything drops off them, it's going onto a plastic sheet. Just be careful you don't tread it in everywhere. But all in all, I'm quite impressed with that. And I'm going to just bring it in to show you. I'm going to just get my camera out of this corner. I'll bring you in here. And let's try and get a little bit of a close up if we can. I don't know whether you can see. You can see a little bit of Charlie Mark where it's there. But all in all, as I said earlier, don't worry about that because when you get that second coat on and, it dry, and it's dry, you will be sanding these either by hand, just carefully with a, a sanding block, or if you've got a Merca or a Festool that will suck the dust as you're sanding, that's what you'll be doing. Now, you won't be going on a 60 grade. You just want something, probably a warm 120 will be enough just to take the nibs and the highlights off this surface to make it smooth. But all in all, pretty impressed with that product. I will sign out now, but I will come back tomorrow just to give you a conclusion when I've got a second coat on and it's dry and we are at the stages of just likely sanding it. But so far, so good. I will say this isn't a sp sponsored paid video. I've purchased this, all the kit from Brewers of Nottingham because they had a trade day and there was a little bit of a discount on the stuff that you purchased actually on the day. But so far, so good. I'm really impressed. It's quite actually therapeutic. It's quite therapeutic. Here, um, with the second day, I've just started on this center in a, well, let's call it the inner reveal. And what I've done, I've loaded it all up and I've literally started to bed the roller in, bed the scrapers in, and I've done that nicely. Now, what I would say to you is just make sure that you've got no hard nogging bits, you know, that have dropped off from like the stuff that's dried off on the sides, make sure you just clean those edges down first. Because I um, made sure that to just scrape those off with a, I'll just, just went round with a scraper and just scraped those edges off so there was nothing that was going to actually drop into the new fresh um, roll on plaster that I was, um, well, what I am actually applying now. So, all in all, um, what I would say to you, this, this, well, really, it's just the top tip Tuesday. When you're doing this second coat, which I'm going to do both sides of this wall and across the top like I did yesterday, just make sure you put enough on because even if you put enough on and it's too much, you always scrape it back off your actual skimming blade and put it back in your tub. But what you want to be doing now is making sure that you can get it all done for two coats because where I 
well, I'd not say struggled with, because there was the metal beads on these areas, clearly that was a little bit more proud than the rest of the plasterboard. So with me putting this on for the first time and never ever using this product before, I wanted to get a layer on first and then a second layer once it was dried. Now, it is next day from me doing the first lot of um, roll-on plaster. I would say, I think really because we got no heating on, it didn't dry as quick as I thought it would. It had gone off, you could have applied another one um, really later on in the afternoon, but I've come next day and I would say it's lovely. It's nice and dry, it's actually quite smooth. You don't need to be sanding it down before you put your second lot of plaster on it. So what I'll be doing today or in the next hour, I'll be just going around all these, going across the top up here, there you go. I'll be going across this next and then bringing these walls back down. And as I said to you yesterday, where I've got in the angles just there, I'll allow these walls to go off before I just float out where that bit of a scrim tape is up that internal angle. I've got time to do that, but I want to really see that this is dry before I start just skimming out that little bit of scrim tape in that corner, which, it, which is dry but I just want another layer over it just to float it out. So um, yeah, I'm gonna crack on and I'll see you at the end when it's all dry and we'll have a quick discuss. Just trying to make it a little bit easier for you to um, see what I've done. Now, when I was just talking about these angle beads on the corner, clearly that is a little bit more proud and a little bit more forward than the rest of the plasterboard. So what I would say is make sure you load up and you put plenty on, particularly that bead edge. Now, when you go with your smoothing tool, I mean, I don't think you can see, if we get in close, if we get in close there, the tool isn't missing anything as I go up. And that's what you've got to do all the way up. You'll do exactly the same. Now, if you get areas that you can see are missing the plaster adhesive, just load a bit more on you'll probably find that there's enough actually built up onto your smoother that you can just, if I can just move my hand around, blather it back on like that and then pull it back up. Now what I've done, and if you can, I don't know whether you can really see close. Can you see, this is what you'd say, oh, it's bad plastering. I'm not worried about these little bits of trowel marks and scuffs on the wall there. I don't know if you can see it. Can we get into it? Like right there. I'm not worried about that sort of thing because I know that when I go with a fine bit of sandpaper over the wall with the murka, there's another bit there. Let's see, can you see? Bit of a texture. That will smooth off. But generally, this wall is really quite smooth considering that, one, I've never done plastering before, but if you can paint, you can plaster, as they say. And, um, <coughs> stop laughing. Once I get the murka going, those little highlights will be taken off nicely. There's, there's the scrim tape that I was showing you. Now that only had one fill over it when I did the scrim taping on, uh, well, Friday, we're now on Sunday morning. So that is what, I will let all that area dry before I start filling and skimming these out because I don't want to be pulling it out of these internal angle edges just there. So that's, uh, what is it, a 10 minute job to do that. They won't need like three skims or anything like that. It'll just be a case I'll just float those out neat and nicely when I come to them. But all in all, quite impressed with that. The other thing I would uh, just highlight, again, these corners might be a little bit out of square where you'll build that corner up with enough adhesive around it to float the whole lot. I'll come back to float the whole lot out in one. And that's what I did with the wider scraper. When I came into the corners up at the top, I just got my nice little flexi filling knife just to add some of the plaster adhesive into the corner and floated them out. It'd be nice to actually have a proper set of smoothers, one that's slightly longer and some really small ones, just so you can get into the nooks and crannies. But if I can just, I can just see a little bit here that just wants smoothing out. Now, if I just carefully float that there, I can float those areas out, as easy as that. 
Right, the other thing I would just highlight and mention, if you've got areas there that you can see it just, oh come on, coming around on the angle beads, don't worry about that. They will all just knock off when it's all dry. But you can see how it's done. It's quite straightforward and simple. And I will, um, yeah, watch this dry. I can see areas drying now across the top, which were only just a fine skim over because clearly I had a scrim tape going across that top. You can just make it out there. I feathered it out on the fill in there. Gotta be careful of me surround sound speakers. Don't ask me about the 7.2 surround sound speakers there. I've got no choice in fitting them in that position. They're not in the ideal position, but hey ho. But no, I've floated that RSJ beam out and hopefully when it's sanded down, it'll be nice and smooth and it will be. So I will see when it's all dry and we'll have a quick sum up. Right, we're on the, I'll say the last lap. The day has come, we're gonna be just sanding down and I have already started sanding. Now, yesterday I put the second coat on. I can now lift the tub up because we're only halfway full on this. The Prestonet and it is the professional trade quality and it's the multi light filler for interior use. Now, you've seen what I've done. I've applied it. I put the second coat on just to build it up because particularly on these areas there that, um, the metal bead was a little bit more protruding is the word that I want compared to the plasterboard. I've built it all up, skimmed it all out. And as I've said to you on, well, in this video earlier on, don't worry too much if you've got slight trowel marks using those smoothing tools, because when you come to do the sanding and I've got the murker out, I've got the hand sander that connects to the vac and I've also got, I'll say the proper murker. I've got these with very fine used pads. Now I've got a feeling that might be a 240. Can't remember now. Uh, it says 180 on it. So that's a warm 180 and that is a well-worn 120. Now, what I'm doing, I'm going around the corners, the angles, the flats into the angle with that, and then I'm finishing off with that 180, the warm 180 on the proper Merker sander, sucking the dust as it goes. And literally, I'm not looking at sanding this down other than just anything that I feel, and I'm just running my, running my hand now, anything that I feel, it's just some trowel marks, literally. It feels smooth. There's just some trowel marks that want nibbing down and you can probably feel them and see them. You just go over like that. Easy as that, it's gone. It sands down ever so easy. So as a product, I'm really impressed with this. It's gone on nicely. It rolled on nicely. It floated out nicely with the smoother. And now it's dry. I can go around with some sandpaper and just literally smooth anything off that's a slight imperfection. But all in all, am I gonna say you want to try this? Yes. Is it a commercial product, i.e. would you do a full room in it? Probably not. Somebody might say to me, Phil, you can. Well, of course you can. But for what I've used it for at my house, where a stud wall's, where a stud wall's gone up and I needed it just floating out, it's been ideal. I've managed to do it. I've not had to wait for a plasterer to come in and make a mess. I can make the mess. Can you hear that noise? Down in that corner, I've got the Max Vac. If you want to know about the Max Vac, it's in there, it's a game changer. I've got a Max Vac running to keep the dust out of the air. So I, I can make a mess in here myself, but I'm not paying anybody to do it, am I? So you too could do this easy. I will say easy. Roll on the filler, stroke plaster, smooth it out, and you've got a plastered wall. Where this will come into its own with a decorator, not sponsored by Brewers, but I did buy the products from Brewers. You get a free t-shirt. Where this product comes into its own is, if you're a decorator that suddenly comes across a bad wall that you need to float out with filler, 
If you had this, you could skim and float out that bad wall, let it dry, and the thinner it is, the quicker it'll dry, and then just give a light nib down, and you can just sand it, and it would be good to go. I've done the same with this. I gave it a sand down, and it's good to go. All I need to do now, which will be in another video, is paint it, and I'll use a dedicated bare plaster primer paint for it. You can use something down emulsion, but I want to do it properly, i.e. use a product that's geared up for these sort of substrates. That'll be in another video. But what you would be doing is probably sanding the wall out, getting it a lot flatter than the original, making a vast improvement, and painting it or lining it. So, am I going to say, give it a go? Of course I am. Am I pleased to have tried it? Of course I am. 30 quid. The tools, about 30, 40 quid. You could probably get some cheaper ones on Amazon. Please have a look at my Amazon shop below. There might be something in there that you might be interested in. But all in all, what a product. It feels lovely and smooth. The other side that I've actually now sanded is as smooth as a baby's bottom that's covered in talc because there's a little bit of dust residue just left on the surface which you'll dust off before you start painting. But all in all, what a product. It's got me out of a bit of a fix. I didn't need the plasterer and I've, well, I'll say I learned a new skill. Every day is a school day if you've never been. Well, I've never been to plastering school so I've had to learn the hard way with that learning curve going like that. I will see you on the next video. Please watch the videos at the end. Those that are liking and subscribing, brilliant. Those that give me super thanks and those that are buying me a coffee, it's much appreciated. Thank you very much. See you on the next one.